They've done it again. Acara is back with another newly released product that improves upon the previous generation, introducing the brand new Acara P2 motion and light sensor. Now this little innovative device is packed with features that'll improve the way you experience home automation while at the same time boosting your smart home network. And before we get started, I wanted to give you guys a little disclaimer and be fully transparent. Akara did send this device out to me free of charge, but as always, any opinions that I express in this video are 100% my own. And with that out of the way, let's dive in and see what this thing's all about. The packaging is pretty straightforward and simple. The box immediately has one detail though that catches your eye, and that's its updated branding feature in the matter and built on thread badges, but more on that here in just a minute. Inside the box, you'll find everything that you need to get started. First up, of course, is the sensor itself, measuring just over an inch and a half in height and an inch and a quarter in diameter. Overall, it has a pretty similar design as its predecessor, although as you can see from this shot here, it is slightly larger than the P1, which is kind of a bummer, but also at the same time, it isn't all that big of a deal for me, just for the simple fact that it'll be hidden out of sight for what I plan to use it for. Alongside the sensor, you'll discover a manual complete with setup instructions, ensuring a smooth and hassle-free installation process. And then to top it all off, they've included two rotating swivel stands and double-sided adhesive stickers, giving you multiple options for mounting the sensor exactly where you need it. First off, what sets this sensor apart is its native matter support over thread. This means seamless integration with popular smart home platforms like Amazon Alexa, Apple Home, Google Home, SmartThings. If you currently or in the past have used the P1 sensor, then you're probably aware that that was actually a Zigbee device. And with Zigbee devices through Acara, it does require it to be paired with one of Acara's Zigbee hubs. I'm talking about stuff like the M1S, the E1, or even the M2 hub, which are all great hubs in their own right. But now with the P2 being a thread product, it can operate independently outside of that hub network and talk directly to your thread border router. And assuming you're already a user of Apple Home, you probably already have one of these devices with either your HomePod mini or applicable Apple TV. And the upcoming Acara Hub M3 would also work in a scenario like this as it'll also feature a thread border router. And generally speaking, thread is the most reliable protocol. The more thread devices that you have, the stronger your smart home will be as each device will talk to each other, building a mesh network. In terms of detection and sensitivity for this motion sensor, it has a range of up to seven meters and a horizontal view of up to 170 degrees. In the near future, you will have the ability to adjust the sensitivity levels in the Alcar app. Unfortunately, in order to pair and use this device directly with their app, you will need the upcoming Acara M3 thread router hub that I mentioned earlier. So until then, I'll exclusively be using it in HomeKit. The P2 doesn't just stop in motion detection. It also comes equipped with an independent light sensor that'll allow for precise control of your lighting and blinds throughout the day, meaning a greater amount of options for automation. However though, with this upgrade over to thread and the addition of the light sensor, there's been a slight trade-off in battery life compared to the P1. Now, battery life is always a concern with smart home devices, and while the P2 sensor still boasts an impressive two-year battery life, it is a step backwards from the five-year battery life of its predecessor. Once you have the Apple Home app opened up, you'll tap the Add Accessory button like normal, and then find your matter code on the back of the included user manual. Once you have it scanned, you'll notice that this device will start blinking and then it'll take, uh, I don't know, about 30 seconds or so for it to pair up. You can then select the room that you'd like to add it to, name the device, whatever you want, and then you can see that both the motion and light sensors are both exposed to HomeKit independently. And then if you go to the room that you just added them to, you can find them at the top of your screen as two separate sensors, where you can control them individually, setting up you know, different automations or different notifications for each one. And while on this subject, this video wouldn't be complete without showing you at least one way that I was able to start implementing this sensor on day one. 
I was able to set it up and kind of hide it out of the way here on the shelf to my little entrance table and use it as a trigger device to wake my hallway iPad that acts as a smart home dashboard. And basically what's going on behind the scenes here is anytime that it detects someone walking by or in the general vicinity, it'll send a notification to this iPad that otherwise is in sleep mode with a black screen. And since I have this iPad locked to the home app by using the built-in guided access mode, it won't actually show that notification on the screen, but instead just wake the iPad. I do also have plans in the future to purchase a second P2 sensor and implement some kind of automations taking advantage of the built-in light sensor that'll control some of the smart blinds and curtains that I have throughout the house based on the current Lux levels. Now, natively, Apple Home does give you access to automations through this sensor that can trigger accessories in your home if the Lux reading gets both above or below a certain level. Really, there's just so many different creative ways that you could implement this sensor to improve your smart home. And while yes, you still could use the P1 to accomplish something similar to what I just showed you with the iPad, I have noticed the P2 to be quicker to respond and overall just more stable with the Thread network. So there's everything that you need to know about the Cara P2 motion and light sensor. Whether you're enhancing home security or optimizing your smart home for efficiency, this device can help you out. If you found this review helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll also have a few links down in the description that'll point you in the right direction if you'd like to learn more about this device or if you're in the market yourself. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.